I want to welcome our good friend Elnardo Webster, who is an attorney. Uh, do me a favor. You got seven names on the firm. Elnardo, could you lay the name of the firm? I know John Inglesino's first. Who's next? It's Inglesino Webster, Wichiscala, and Taylor. That's only four. That's a test. <laughs> and also, Elnardo played in the NFL for the Pittsburgh Steelers. When was that? Uh, 1992 and 1993. Okay. Now you might wonder, we're not talking about law in particular, but Elnardo is a good friend and we've actually been talking a lot as um, we're taping this literally, literally before the Super Bowl to be seen after. Big picture issue that Brian Flory started, not about the law, uh, the legal case, not going to talk about the actual case, going to talk about the larger question of how could there be 31, 32 teams in the NFL and as we speak today, one African-American coach, big picture. What's the problem with this picture, El Nardo? Um, I, I think that you have to step back a little bit. Um, and I think that the Brian Flores lawsuit uh, kind of focuses a light on a um, tough issue, uh, not just within the NFL, but I think in society at large. I think that the first issue is you have to understand who Brian Flores is. Um, Brian Flores is a, a family who a uh, Honduran national whose family migrated to Brownsville, Brooklyn, uh, where he went to uh, poly prep, played football there, uh, played football at Boston College, uh, never played professionally, never was drafted, um, and wound up being an intern uh, working for the Patriots. And as many folks know, uh, you know, working with Coach Belichick is the Harvard of football. Uh, so here's a guy. Patriots. Yeah, here's a guy who showed up at 23 years old as essentially a, a film uh, and gopher, a film guy and a gopher, uh, mm. and 14 years later uh, was the defensive coordinator for the, new, for the Super Bowl winning New England Patriots. Um, so obviously um, had a lot of intelligence. Paid his uh, dues. Paid his dues. Uh, started from the bottom, worked his way up to the top, and was given a great opportunity. Um, With the Miami Dolphins, has, two, has a winning record over two seasons, and they let him go. Um, and he points to the fact that um, the Holy Grail in football is a quarterback uh, and that um, there were two instances in where he kind of rebuffed Steve Ross, who's pretty successful. Um, and uh, one was um, he didn't really want to meet with Tom Brady on his yacht. He thought it was violating uh, both the rule and the spirit of the no tampering law. Uh, and the second is, um, and this is when Tom Brady was contemplating what team he was going to go to after leaving the Patriots. Um, and the second was um, he he's argued that Flores offered him one hundred thousand dollars a game to lose. Um, this is so, the owner of the Miami Dolphins allegedly, according to Brian Flores, offered him one hundred thousand dollars to lose games so that they would have a higher draft choice. And I'm sorry for getting so into the weeds here, but basically, without going into the lawsuit, right now he has taken on the NFL. He has taken on the owners, all of whom except one are white billionaires and that one who is not white is not African-American. But the bigger issue here is why haven't there been more African-Americans named coaches in the NFL with 70 well, percent of the players being black? Right. So I, I think there I think that that's been a question that's been around for a long time. Um, back when I was playing, it was a question. It's always been a question. There have been very few, you know, African-American coaches uh, in, in the history of in, in the history of uh, in the history of the NFL. Um, so in 2002, um, Dan Rooney, who was the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, the guy I played for, um, put in what was called the Rooney Rule. And essentially, the Rooney Rule said that um, on any high-level position, uh, coordinator, uh, front uh, you know front office position, uh, head coach, GM, uh, assistant GM, uh, head of player relations kind of position, you always had to interview uh, two. Um, minority candidates uh, as part of your interviewing process. And that, later, that rule was modified um, about 10 years later. Um, and um, it, was, it was required that you, you interview two people outside of your organization. So you couldn't interview, like if I was the Colts, I couldn't interview two people that worked for me in, in, as, as I'm far not, as I'm not sorry for interrupting. I'm managing time here. But here's my question to you. Has the Rooney rule, you got to interview a certain number of minority candidates, has it become, quote unquote, a sham? So you're interviewing them with no real intent to hire them. Yeah. I mean, I think that's I think that's the I think that's yes. I think that the answer is yes. You've seen Troy Vincent say it, who's the number two guy at the NFL 
Uh, you've actually seen uh, Commissioner Goodell come out in the last couple of days and basically admit it himself and say, we've got to do a better job. Our job of hiring minority coaches is atrocious. And that's the word he used. So um, I think that the league is was initial energy was to say, this is ridiculous. This is not true. This is not who we are. But I think very quickly they pivoted and said, you know, we have a problem here and we can do better. We will, we do, we will do better. But I think just to go back to your original question, Steve, is how does it, how does a situation like this come? And, and really where it comes from is that a lot of the head coaches, um, especially in the last, I'd say 10 years, have been offensive coordinators or quarterback coaches. And although 70% of the folks are, our minority in that space, 90% of the offensive coordinators and um, and uh, quarterback coaches are are um, are not black, are not are not are not minority. That's so right. a very small pool of folks that you're looking at um, actually are coming from that 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 silo. So there's a lot of defensive coordinators. There's a lot of you know defensive position coaches, but there aren't a lot of OCs and there aren't a lot of quarterback coaches that are that are that are diverse. Can't be Oh, no, sorry, if we were doing a sports show, I'd love to get into greater detail with you on the sports side because I love it. But here's my question. Stephen A. Smith said the other day on ESPN, bottom line is a disproportionate number of white billionaires who own NFL teams do not trust that black men can lead a football team. Do you agree with that? I think that, I, I think that um, you agree that's that statement. The that that's true. I, 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 I agree with Stephen, and, and, and I think that that's, you know, not just in football, that's writ large in society. I think that the same issues that you see in lack of diversity and leadership of law firms, accounting firms, and business organizations, Fortune 500 companies, is the same kind of energy. And I think it's unfortunate uh, because I think that you see that where there are diverse candidates, and diverse people, they perform, they outperform uh, their, their peer groups. So I think the data shows that when you have minorities and minority leadership, you, you outperform. Um, it creates a different perspective. It creates a different way of looking at the world. It, it brings more ideas to the table. Uh, but I think that the NFL su is suffering in a lot of ways from the same uh, issues that at the end of the day, there are a small group of folks who are in a room who have to make a decision. In the NFL, there's 32 guys. It's your team. You can do what you want to do. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable with the guy, if you don't think that this is a person that looks like a person you're used to dealing with, uh, you're comfortable dealing with, you can absolutely make the decision. It's a unilateral decision. There's no commissioner. There's no other owners. It's your team. You make the decisions. But those decisions have consequences. Elnardo, I promise that we'll have a broader discussion about this issue, not just about NFL coaches and 70% of the players being black. And as we speak, one black coach, there may be more by the time this airs, we hope. We don't know but it does impact other industries as well. Arnardo Webster, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We'll continue this discussion. All the best, Arnardo. Thank you, Steve. Have a great day. You got it. See you next time. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Arnardo Webster.